start. All right, so we've been talking about how management is the coordinating of work activities so they are completed efficiently and effectively. So how do we do that? Well, we can increase production. So as we look at increasing production, that brings us to Henry Fail. Henry Fail was a French mining engineer. He became the manager at age 25 and was CEO by age 44. He managed a geographically dispersed company, so he had more than 10,000 employees across a quite a vast area of Europe. So we're going to look at Fayol's perspective in terms of the role of a manager. So according to Fayol, the functions of management are that they need to do more than just increase production. So it's about more than just operations, but the role of the manager is to plan, to organize, to command, coordinate, and control. So let's look at what those are. But those probably sound very familiar to a discussion we had in our intro video, and that is the functional areas of modern management. And so most management textbooks will refer to the functions of management as planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. The terminology that Fayol used is planning, organizing, command, coordination, and control. So we really just consolidated the command and coordination into leading. But when it comes to these functional areas of management that we see, uh, they came from Henry Fayol. All right, so let's talk about what he means by them. So the role of the manager is to plan. They need to develop a strategy based on the materials, the equipment, the people and facilities that we have. What is it we're going to do? How are we going to be successful? And the strategic planning process that Fayol is talking about is what we use today. We need to consider uh, future trends for our organization. We need to consider our processes and external environments. So a good plan, according to Fail, is a plan that has unity. So we need one plan, one strategy for the whole organization so that we don't have one department going one way and another department going another way. We need continuity. That is, we need short-term goals and long-term goals, right? These should tie together uh, over time. We need flexibility, so we need to be able to plan and react to unexpected events, and we need precision in our plan. The role of the manager is about reducing uncertainty, okay? And so we need to help create less risk, less instability, and part of that is by having a good and well thought out plan for our organization and what our people are going to do. We then need to organize. We need to hire. We need to train. And just like Bernard, Fail says we need to provide unity of direction, right? We all need to be working towards that common cause. And one way we can do that is define the duties clearly. So today, when you look at your contract for a, a job or a project, it clearly defines what the expectations are in terms of what you're actually supposed to do. So we see an, emph an, emph an emphasis uh, in this classical period on roles and rules, clearly defining expectations for people. What are they supposed to do? And then Fayol says we need to organize by harmonizing activities. So we are going to be working towards that common purpose. And we are going to then try to reduce regulations, red tape, too much paper and documents uh, in order to be effective. You'll notice in these slides uh, references to some topics. So later uh, in the semester, we will spend time um, on these particular topics, uh, on planning, on organizing specifically in terms of some of the management processes. So those just rep represent later topics or later slides we'll be going through. When Fail talks about organizing, 
He talks about the fact that the when you are recruiting, the length of time it takes to choose an employee should increase with the level of position. So if you're hiring someone just to do some grunt work, some basic manual labor, you could hire them. I can't see my hands when I do that. <laughs> if I make the picture bigger, then you can't see the slides. So you just have to imagine what my hands are doing. Uh, so if you're hiring someone to do just some basic uh, physical labor, grunt work, then you can hire them right on the spot, okay? If you're looking for someone to lead your organization, to be the CEO, then it should take considerably longer to find the right and appropriate candidate. And so when we do the recruiting nowadays, right, we see that same thing in terms of how long do we leave out job postings? How long is that search uh, and shortlist? And so it tends to be much longer uh, for those upper management jobs. The other thing we hear from, from FAIL is that higher mathematics count for nothing in managing business. Uh, so when we look at the math that managers do, it's not calculus, it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And so FAIL's comment is interesting here because when we look at most business degrees across North America, we require calculus uh, in the degree. But according to FAIL, you don't need to spend your time with that higher mathematics because you're not going to use it in actual management. And so, in fact, if you are taking the BBA uh, at Red Deer Polytechnic, we do not require calculus in our program. Instead, we are focusing on management of businesses. The other uh, interesting comment that comes out of FAIL is that when you choose who the leaders are, when you choose who is your management, should you pick the technical content expert or should you pick someone who is more an administrator, right? They know process, they um, manage meetings, they, they coordinate people. Well, let's think about this. Let's say that, let's say you're a principal of a elementary school. All right. So you're retiring, they're going to replace and find a new principal for the elementary school. Should we hire to be the principal of the elementary school someone who has been teaching for 20 years or someone who's been teaching for two? Well, if you've ever been the employee uh, where your boss knew nothing <laughs> about what you do, how you do it, then your response is probably, I want the person who has been in the role of the people that they're going to lead who's been doing it for a long time. They know how we function, they know what we do. According to FAIL, that's not who you should put in the position, okay? I know as, you know, when we have leaders, we don't like people who don't know what they're talking about telling us what to do. But from FAIL's perspective, it's more important to have those administrative management skills than it is to have the technical knowledge. So it's more useful to have good administrator knowledge and be mediocre at technical stuff uh, than be a brilliant technician. And we do see this in, in business, right? We often complain about people who are failing up. <laughs> How come they took that person who's terrible at the job and put them in charge? Well, they might be a mediocre, uh, technician. So in terms of the role of the people being managed, they may be terrible in that position. Uh, you would hope that they are better as an administrator. So according to FAIL, it's more important to have the management skills if you're in the position uh, than to be that content expert. I'll leave that up to you to decide whether or not you agree uh, with that. So as you look at who you would employ, uh, who do you make the principal of your elementary? the two-year faculty member, the 20-year faculty member, who do you hire in management? One of the arguments for taking the person who has two years or who is terrible at the job uh, is that you're not taking away the quality worker, the experienced worker, the person who's been doing it for 20 years at what they really excel at 
and putting them in the position they really excel at is what's most advantageous for the organization. So we talked about, let's just recap a little bit here. We talked about planning. We talked about organizing. All right, and the last piece is command, coordination, and control. So this is the directing or supervising of people. The manager needs to have knowledge of the employees. Who are they? What are their talents? They need the ability to fire the incompetent ones. They should set a good example. So this is coming back to what Bernard is talking about in terms of being of good character, being that moral leader. They should be able to perform performance audits. So we need to be able to evaluate the workers. And they need to have good knowledge of contracts and collective agreements. So as you work with unions, what is it you are allowed to ask your employees to do and not do? Can you shorten the time they take lunch? Is that allowed? Is that something else been negotiated with the union? So you have to have knowledge of those contracts and collective agreements. You need to provide that unity of direction. So are we all moving in the same uh, for the same goals? And according to fail, managers should avoid being engrossed in the details. Okay, don't get bogged down in the details. Um, the challenge, of course, with management is there's a disconnect. If you are not the technical expertise, if you spend all your time in meetings, putting out fires, you're not observing uh, what your day-to-day -day workers are. So there's that separation then of you from the day-to-day -day grind, right? You could though spend all your time micromanaging, finding out what every worker is doing all day long, but you're not gonna have time for that and your employees probably won't appreciate it. So you're, you're going to have to be able to connect even though by nature the job is disconnected you're going to have to have some knowledge of the employees and, and their expertise, but at the same time, you may not be that content expert because you were hired for your administrative skills. So you're avoiding being engrossed too much in the details um, as you work towards the or overall organization goals. And you're striving for unity and loyalty. So how do you get your workers to work towards that common cause and to commit to the organization. According to Fayol, the role of the manager is to harmonize the activities of the organization. So we need to balance expenses and revenues. We need to figure out when there's appropriate times for equipment maintenance, but still have adequate production time to meet our goals. So there's lots of trade-offs within an organization and according to fail, the role of the manager is to find the balance. So think about it this way. Let's suppose that you've started your own business. Maybe you have a nail salon, okay? You want lots of, lots of customers, so you buy every nail color possible. You want to offer all kinds of services, right? So we want to um, have, um, what's the, the whack, the, um, now my mind is going blank, but that, um, shoot, <laughs> uh, paraffin wax, there you go, on your hands, right, spa type treatments. There is, as we start to build our own business, we want to have all those things because we want to do all those things for our clients and get more clients. But we have to have a bit of measured growth and we have to balance those expenses with incoming revenue. If at the beginning we don't have a lot of money coming in as we develop our client base, we probably shouldn't go out and buy all the fancy equipment and all the service options right away. It's something we'll have to purchase over time as we bring in more customers, more revenue. So the role of the manager is to create that balance. The role of the manager is also to create conformity with the plan. So are we in alignment with our organizational goals? So FAIL has 14 principles of management or what we call the general administrative theory. So what do you need in terms of managing? 
The 14 principles of management include division of work. So we will get more from our workers if we have what we call divisions of labor. That is, each person has a role. We can produce more as a company if we each specialize within the organization rather than everybody doing the same thing and repeating tasks. We need to have authority, right? So chain of command, right? We need to know who to go to and we need that unity of direction in terms of we need someone who's leading, who's telling us what is it we're trying to accomplish so that we can then all be encouraged to move in that same direction. There needs to be discipline. We see this in the early classical management. There's a lot of emphasis on authority and discipline in terms of who is telling everyone what to do. So lots of centralization in our organization and making sure that workers are sticking to what's expected of them. So talking about in terms of, you talked before about process and rules being a big emphasis in this classical period. That unity of command, so somebody on top, that centralization, who then determines uh, what we are doing. When Fail looks at that uh, uh, centralization, so we have that unity of, of command, we have someone on top who's providing that direction to make sure we're all going the same direction, so unity of direction providing that authority. And then we need to have lines of communication. So we need someone to talk to. You need to know who it is that you go to if there are issues. So Fail has what is called a scalar chain. This is the line of authority. So you, the worker, go to the foreman, the foreman goes to the supervisor, the supervisor goes to the department head. So just like Bernard, we know who to go to. We all have someone to go to. Okay, we know that chain of command. Fail also talks about span and control. How many people should be under one particular supervisor? And so if we go back in history, the first time we see the idea of span and control is from the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians say that there should be 10 laborers for one overseer. Today, we have uh, incident command, systems ICS, and it recommends that you have one manager for seven people because of the limit in terms of if it's an emergency, how wide in terms of how many things can you manage, how many people can you coordinate at a time without the balls being dropped. We'll look more at that uh, later in the semester. But Faye always talking about the importance of having an ideal ratio of manager to employees and that line of communication as you move up to your manager, their manager, and so on. Fail also recognize the challenge if everything has to go up that scalar chain, it can be difficult to get some of the day-to-day -day things done. And so he has what is called a gangplank and this allows for lateral communication. So that means that shift managers can talk to other shift managers, foremans can talk to other foremans. So there is a way at the horizontal level across for people who are in the same position as you for you to communicate that way as well. So we see that vertically scalar chain and then across the gangplank. As we look, we go back to our 14 principles of management. The next one we're looking at is the subordination of individual interests to the general interest. So just like Bernard, what we're seeing here is that good leader, that moral leadership. And so what we're, management's role is to subordinate the individual interest to the general interest. That is make sure we don't have any workers who are selfish or lazy. We get rid of the, the ambitious, the ignorance, the laziness, the weakness. We're working for the collective good. Now, part of this is making sure you have no opportunists, people who are only there to serve themselves and in the same process harm the organization. 
At the same time, this comes back to that idea of unity of direction and the responsibility of management and the people within the organization uh, to have to be people of good character and put the best interests of the organization and the collective um, first. Other parts for this 14 principles of management is the importance of a wage remuneration, that there is material and social order, that there is equity so that we treat everyone uh, the same. So that might, that means that we may have some standardization in terms of um, performance evaluations to make sure that uh, no one individual is being treated differently than the others. We're incurring initiative. And lastly, we want to look at a spirit decor. A spirit decor is harmony and unity. According to Fayol, Dividing enemy forces to weaken them is clever, but dividing one's own team is a grave sin against the business. So the purpose of management is to create that cohesion, that harmony among the employees. So if you think about how some businesses operate today, okay, some sales businesses, maybe that's a car dealership, uh, maybe that is a company that sells electronics. When you work on commission. And we have sales competitions where uh, prizes or recognition is given to the individual with most sales. Their pay is based on the number of sales they individually make. Well, this means that we are pitting workers against each other. And so FAIL would not be in support of this type of organizational structure where you're dividing one's own team against each other. Um, rather than trying to find that harmony and unity where employees are encouraging each other, um, helping each other as part of that collective organization.